Hey everybody, welcome back to Level Pixel Level. In this last video, I'm just going to attempt to bring the character into Unity. I'm going to add a real simple character controller to it. I'm going to quickly go over a script that I'm going to add. This isn't necessarily a scripting tutorial video, but I'll just show you the script that I sort of cobbled together from other tutorials, and then we'll give the character a test in the game engine. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just open up Unity Hub, and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to use 2019.4.16f1. And I'm just going to do the base 3D template. I'll just call this Knight Controller. And I'll click Create. So let this load up, and I'll swing back when it's ready to go. All right, my Unity scene is ready to go. I'm just going to create a new folder called Knight. I'll double click into that, and then I'll just bring in my assets. So I have three pieces here, the two FBXs from the last uh, tutorial, and then just this texture pack here. Uh, one thing I did notice with Blender's FBX export is that it actually exports both clips with each FBX. So I think it's stashing them in the NLA editor, and then any action associated with that rig are being exported with that FBX file. It's something I'm going to play around with a little bit more. Maybe I'll do a future tutorial where I talk about the NLA editor with relation to Unity. Okay, let's just check these animations. So there's my walk animation, and I can click on idle here and watch my idle animation. One thing to make sure is just that your rig is set to generic. I'm going to do one other thing here, just on the materials. I'm just going to extract them into my main folder here, and I'm just going to add my texture to the albedo here. All right, I'm going to build my character controller now. So I'm going to add a new object, a empty here, and it's at zero. I'm just going to rename it to Knight Character. And I'll just drag my Knight Idle FBX import as a child of that. Let's click them both, make sure they're both at zero. All right, so on the Knight Character Empty object here, I'm going to add a character controller. And I'm going to keep the standard pill feature here. I'm just going to raise the height on the Y, increase the radius, and just increase the height, just to encompass that entire character. Yep, it's looking good right there. On the Knight Character Idle, I'm just going to add an animator component here. And that's perfect just like that. I'm just going to quickly adjust the lighting. Um, I'm just going to change the direction of my sun just so it's facing at the character. And I'll just also address the color here just to be desaturated. All right, let's build the animation controller here. So I'll go to Create Animator Controller. And I'll just rename this to Night Animation. And then on the Night Character Idle, I'll just drag that into my controller here. So I need a couple clips in here. If I just click open this arrow right here, I can see these two actions here, or I can just drag them both in. So I want the night idle to be the starting point, and it's already hooked up to the arrow here. And if I right click on this, I can make a transition to the walk down here. And I can right click and do a make transition back up to here. So I want a condition to switch between these. So under parameters, I'm just gonna add a bool. I'm just gonna type in walk. Then under this arrow transition, I'm just going to turn off has exit time. I'll put the transition duration to 0.1 for now, and I'll just add the walk condition. That's got to be true. And I'll just do the opposite for the transition out back to my idle. So a pretty simple character controller that I'm setting up here. Um, nothing too elaborate. I want to keep it really simple just for this setup here. So I'll just test this out and hit play. Yep, and there's my character moving in idle. And if I flip on the walk here, the character is walking. Okay, I want both animations to loop. So I'll click on my FBX import here, the night character idle. And under night to form rig the idle track here, I'm just going to turn on loop time. Make sure you're on animation as well here at the top to adjust these tracks. So I'll click apply, and I'll flip to my walk. And I'll also just click that and click apply. So let's test this out in shot. I'll just hit play. Yep, there's my idle animation, and I'll just test the walk animation. Cool, so they're both looping now, and they're ready for me to add a script. All right, I'll just stop the playback here. I'll click on Knight Character. I'll do Add Component. I'll click on New Script here. I'll just call this Knight Controller. And I'll just double click on the script to go to Visual Studio. All right, I'm just going to declare some variables off the top. So the first one I'm going to declare is my speed. So it's going to be public float speed, and I'll just paste that in here. So I'm going to adjust this later, but it allows me to actually access my speed in the actual scene. 
The next one I'm going to do is public uh, character controller. And I'll just call this controller. And I'll also do public animator. And I'll call this animation. Cool. So those are all ready to go. Um, I'm just going to save that and flip back to the game engine. And under night character, under the script, I now have these input. So I can click and drag the character controller into controller. And for the animation, for the animator, I can just click on this option here and bring in my night character idle. Okay, I'll double click on the script again to bring it up. So I'm going to do everything in the update function. I'm not going to do multiple functions here. Uh, let's just get right to it with the forward and sideways movement. I'm going to declare two floats. I'm going to do float side. And this is just going to be an input. And it's just going to get axes. And it's going to be horizontal. And I'll do forward as well. So I'll do float forward. And this will be input dot get axes. And this will be vertical. OK, so the actual axes here are from the game engine uh, if you come to the project settings and you go to the input manager, you can come down here to horizontal and vertical. And there's a whole set of hotkeys and options here for actually accessing these input options. So this is all built into Unity. You don't necessarily have to code getting the key access. Um, it's just a really quick way to grab the inputs of your keys. So I'll go back to the script here. And let's actually now use these in another vector to calculate how to move. So I'll do vector three walk. And this is going to equal the transform forward. And I'll multiply this by my new forward float that I just declared above. And I'll add this to transform right. And I'll multiply this by my side. Now let's actually move the controller. So I'll do controller, which I declared at the beginning. And I'll do move, and I'll multiply my speed by time dot delta time. And then I'll multiply this by walk. So this was actually going to move the object through space. Um, so if I flip back to the game engine now and just hit play, I'm just hitting my W, A, and my S and D keys and moving around. It's very slow. So let's put the speed up to five here and I'll hit play again. And now I can move this character around. But the animation is not really changing. I want it to change to the walk when he walks. And I also want to get some rotation change in there as well. Let's do the rotation first. So I'm going to say if side is not equal zero, I want to actually rotate the character. So if this option here has input from my horizontal axes, I'm going to rotate the character. And I'm going to do this with this.transform.rotate. So this is going to take a vector three and then a world space. So I'm not going to move it anywhere on the x axis but I am going to move it on the y-axis, and I'm just going to input the side again as my input. And I'm not going to change anything on the z-axis, but I'm going to do this in space.world. So I'm going to change the character in world space as it's moving around. So I'm going to save this, and I'll flip back to my game engine and test it out. Cool. So now I'm moving, and I'm rotating as well when I'm hitting the A or the D key. Last thing to input is the animation. OK, so if I go back to my animator, though, remember that I had this transition here. And my condition was the walk transition has to be set to true. So I've set that bool. And this transition has a walk, and it's set to false. So I need to access this in my script. Now, earlier, I declared this animation variable here, which I've already input with my night character idle animator. So let's go back to the script. And I'm just going to add another if uh, forward does not equal 0 or side does not equal zero. So if either of those are moving, I'm going to do something. And under the animation, I'm going to set a bool, and I'm going to set the walk animation to true. Cool, so if the character is moving, set it to true. Now I want to do one more thing. Um, I'm just going to add an else here. And I'm going to set the animation back to false if the character is not moving. All right, so that's ready to go. So let's test that out. So I'm going to hit play. And in my viewport, I'm just going to hit forward. Cool, and it's activating the walk. It's so cool at this point to see it finally working in the game engine. 
Uh, it's just really fun to make something interactive, actually, just when you're actually inputting it and you're seeing your animation work. So now if I rotate, I'm also activating that walk setting. So this is just the beginning. Now what I can do is I can add more animations. I could add a fighting animation, an attack animation, a defend animation, and build them into my state machine here. From there, I can just add additional lines of code to say, hey, if this input is being checked, make this attack animation work or make the character walk backwards slower. Sort of up to me now how much detail I can add to this. So let's flip it off and let's just add a couple more things just to make this a little bit more fun. I'm just gonna add a 3D object, a plane, and I'll zero this out. And I'm just going to scale it up. That's looking good. And I'm just going to add a couple 3D cubes around the scene. So I'll just scale this up here. Yep, that's looking good. And I'll just duplicate it over. Just so I have something to see in space as I move my character around. Um, sometimes if you're moving a character in empty space, it can be tough to know that you're actually translating through that space. And let's just do one thing with the camera. So I'm gonna lift the camera up. I'm gonna rotate it down just a bit. And the last thing I'll do with the camera is just make it a child of night character. Now when I hit play, the camera will actually follow the night character around. Cool. All right, I'm just gonna to flip to my lighting panel and I'm gonna turn my color. I'm just gonna add a ambient color here to the shot. I'll hit play again. Okay, that's looking really cool. There is one other option with the main camera that I could do is I can actually just constrain it to the night character with a constraint component. So I'll lift it out of the hierarchy again. Um, under the inspector here, I'm gonna add a component, a constraint, and it's gonna be a position constraint. Um, I'm just gonna add a source here, and that's gonna be my night character. And I'll click activate. And let's try this out. So now my camera will move with the character, but will not get the rotation of the character. This is just a different camera setup. It really depends on what kind of game or what kind of character you want to build, but it's something to try out. Anyway, all of these files are available on Gumroad if you want to download them and try them out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting me in this video. Uh, this is a really fun one to make and something I want to keep making more detailed long form tutorials like this where I go from the beginning to the end of a whole sort of pipeline process. Again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.